Welcome back. We're heading for France now and a new made-for-TV event, the 470 Sprint Cup. Prepare for some thrills and spills. Welcome to a new format for dinghy sailing in the Olympic 470 class. We're in Western France, Brittany, where the 470s have just completed their crucial European Championships in Brest. But instead of all packing up to leave this French naval port, the European winners are staying for a cash prize shootout and they're allowing the cameras to get as close as they like. Sure, the Sprint Cup's a new initiative for 470. Um, we've done short course racing before, but this one's slightly different. On one day we take the best of the European Championships results, top four, men and women, put them together and see what happens. It's three races, no drop, uh, and in conditions that today will test, really test the sailors. They've been sailing in light winds all the regatta, and now they've got some heavy winds. We'll see what they can come up with. Uh, we've got prize money, yeah, the sailors are really wrapped in the idea. They usually uh, run on the oil, uh, smell of an oily rag. Uh, we've got €3,000 for first, 1500 for second and 500 for third place. So the sailors are really going out there for, uh, for keep. Following a tough Europeans, the qualifiers for the Sprint Cup are as follows. Local heroes Gildas Philippe and Nick Lebert were the top men from Europe. They were beaten, though, by American silver medalists Paul Forrester and Kevin Burnham, the most experienced team here. Swedes Johan Mulland and Martin Andersen were on top form during the Europeans, as were Brits Nick Rogers and Joe Glanfield, who led the men's discipline into the final race. The women's Europeans were won by Spanish gold medalist Natalia Villa de Fresne by the mast here and Sandra Azon. Second were Slovenians Vesna de Kleva and Clara Malcek sailing their best regatta ever. And third were Swedes Teresa Torgerson and Vandela Zakrisen, the fourth women's team unable to stay for the Sprint Cup. So to an overcast race day, how are the competitors feeling as they prepared for battle? We were going to kick some ass today. <laughs> so it, it's fun. Short courses, tight racing. Uh, no space for uh, mistakes. Okay, who do you think is uh, going to be your main opposition today? So these guys over there with the lucky British shorts on, they're going to be really tough. Wow. Other than that, no one else is going to be there. We're really looking forward to it. Uh, got some scores to settle from the European, so, uh, so hopefully it'll be a day, day for revenge. Are you guys going to win today? Mm, yes. <laughs> we'll try <laughs> to beat the boys. <laughs> do you normally get the chance to sail against the men? No, we don't, not often. There is some smaller gaffes, we do that, but uh, not often. So it's really good today and uh, gives us a chance to beat them. Uh, it's going to be yellow flag, so we can pump the sails as much as we want. So uh, it's going to be quite physical today, I think. Do you feel they have an advantage, or you have an advantage, or is it a level playing field? <laughs> today, when it's a little bit more wind, maybe they have an advantage because they are heavier and a little bit stronger, maybe, but it's uh, not over. <laughs> That'll be very exciting. Lots of boats, lots of boats coming very close together. Probably some crunching, but uh, we will play fair. Good luck out there. Okay, thanks. Oh, time to go. Onto the race course now, and in the commentary box, we have Rob Andrews, Olympic 470 coach here to help us give an insight into what's going on. Rob, really great to have you with us. Thanks for that, Digby. I'm really looking forward to this uh, short format style of racing. Should be great fun. 
Well, normally an Olymp Olympic course, Rob, is a, a mile high and a mile wide and our cameras, you know, we just can't get so close. But this time they've invited us to get as close as we want. And we have a, a generally triangular course for this one, an old style course around a big triangle and uh, reaching downwind and across and finishing up wind. Should be interesting at those jibe marks when they get there. We have a camera on board the Swedish girls boat. Torgerson and Zachrison and the Americans. Okay, it's going to be over. Hey, hey, hey! Yeah, the Americans were worried about the uh, Swedish boys there. Swedish boys with a giveaway boat. Brits tacking over onto port. Americans, Forrester and Burnham right behind them. Yeah, I think the Americans are going to struggle to live with the Brits out there. Girls, Zacherson, Torgerson tacking over as well. Quick move. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, the Americans calling the Swedish girls across there. Swedish girls with a giveaway boat, but the Americans want to get out to this left hand side. Shift. And the Swedish girls calling shift on board their boat for a quick tack. There goes Zacherson on the trapeze. And she's kind of half in, half out, not fully powered up here, Rob. Yeah, the crews are having to adjust their uh, trapeze height. It's pretty marginal out there in terms of trapezing. And in these conditions, I think we'll find the women very competitive amongst the uh, boys. It's going to be a really even fleet out there. Back on board with Foster and Burnham. At the top mark. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Americans <laughs> leading around that mark. Kevin Burnham getting really stuck into the spirit of this cash prize event. Rock and roll, buddy. Rock and roll. Oh, it's great stuff. And the uh, Spanish girls round in second via de Fresny. And as on with the Swedish girls, Torgerson, Zacherson in third and fourth. It's the, the Slovenians, De Kleva, Malcek. So uh, the girls doing incredibly well here, Rob. Yep, the uh, trailing three boats are all boys' boats, and uh, in these conditions, I think they're going to struggle to reel in the girls in front of them. It'll be interesting. Well, that's great stuff. They normally sail in their own classes in the Olympics, and uh, they were saying they, you know, it's a good opportunity to uh, to mix it up. And um, uh, fair play, I'm enjoying this very much. I think that's the great thing about uh, the 470 class. We can have girls and boys sort of compete on equal terms. Well, the Swedes having a ding-dong battle with the Slovenians there flying behind as we get down to the wing mark, the bottom mark. Americans coming in first. <laughs> More spirit from Kevin Burnham, the crew. As they talk their way through the jibe. Yeah, these jibes are going to be interesting. They don't normally... Uh, do these reach to reach jibes. And again, great communication from the Americans. While the Slovenian girls, De Kleva and Malcek, rounding the mark just inside them, it's the Brits, Rogers and Glanfield, and Mullen and Anderson, Swedish lads, bringing up the final position as they head out onto this reach, back nice at the front. Work, nice work, really nice work. Things going off a little bit, give me a little rock here. Good encouragement and communication there, Rob. Yeah, great chat amongst the uh, Hellman crew here and the coordination with these just little rocks. It's very tricky in these conditions, but they're doing One it to perfection. On next wave and we'll take down. Go, 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 go. Now, Rob, they have a, a yellow flag up, which we're means they can they can rock the boat and pump the spinnakers. Is that a new development in this Olympic class? Yeah, the 470s have slowly been bringing down the wind limit when the flag goes up. Uh, at the Olympic Games itself, that flag will only be hoisted in winds over 10 knots, whereas at this event, the flag is up all the time, no matter how much the wind is. And at the moment, it looks like they've got about six knots, but they can still pump or move their body as much as they like. And Rob, has, has that altered the, the game significantly? 
Yeah, it has. It's made it more physical, particularly for the crews. And also, I think it's just shifted the responsibility back to uh, the sailors themselves. No longer are they judged by people on the water. It's uh, an open playing field now. Well, we've seen the Spanish team rounding in second. Via de Fresne, Sandra Azan behind the Americans as the Americans approach the top mark. And Rob, Paul Forrester, Kevin Burnham, the most experienced sailors here. Yeah, for, for sure they're the most experienced. Kevin, the crew, he's now 48, which shows that you can still be very active at that age. They've got two medals each, which they won their first medal, not sailing together that was though, back in 1992. So they've been doing it for over sort of 10, 12 years now. And uh, as you can hear from Kevin, They've still got as much enthusiasm as 19-year-olds to go and win those medals in Athens later in the year. Looking good. Well, and Kevin, at the moment, getting enthused about the prize money. Quite unusual in this game, Rob. Yeah, the Olympic sailors don't normally have prize money. They're struggling for sponsors, so they'll all be fully fired up to try and win this 3,000 euros. Great sailing by the Spanish team in second and the Swedes in third as we cut right around the course towards the finish line no change in the top position Burnham and Forrester making their last tack for the finish line beautiful sailing by this pair the experienced Americans well they're happy about that great race by them coming up in second place as on and Via de Fresne Oh, and look, here's a bunch up, Rob. Brits just trying to squeeze in there at the mark, right on the finish line. Yeah, they're really struggling here. They might have to flip onto port. Oh, it's close with the French. No incidents, I think. I think they've got away with it. I think they've managed to get into third. Well, a great finish. How close was that? Brits just squeezing ahead of the French team. Here are the results. The Americans first, the Spanish second, Brits in third, and the French fourth it's very tough the current's going upwind now and uh, so it's uh, it makes it very hard coming back down because we have to battle the current battle the current makes the waves a lot bigger and then you have rain and squalls coming in so you just don't know what the wind is going to do and you have to react really fast when something changes it was awesome we uh, had a pretty bad start but we were able to tack off to the left and get a really big puff over there and get into the lead and then downwind we just rocked and rocked and rocked till we went faster than everybody else One and uh, were able to win the race. We'll we have to keep the pressure on though, we have two more races to go, we have to win all the races and then we have no worries. Well we'll see if he has any more worries after the break when we're back with the 470 Spring Cup in Brest, France. Do stay with us. straight into race two now of three at the 470 Sprint Cup. A tight bunch up on the start line. We have a camera on board the Spanish girls boat, Via de Fresne and Azon. Rob Andrews in the commentary box. It's all looking uh, very tight on this line, Rob. Yeah, it's slightly different to normal strategy in that uh, I think we'll see half and half on starboard and port coming out of the start here. The Spanish and the Americans favouring this port tack. Oh, and the Americans just ducking behind Rogers and Glanfield from Britain. Pretty hard to tell at this stage what's what, but uh, a fairly dismal day in... Uh, the west coast of France in Brest, but the wind has picked up a little bit. Yeah, it'll be interesting in this race. I think this might have given the uh, edge back to the boys' boats over the girls. Forrester talked also about the tide. There's a lot of tide at this venue, and uh, it's going to be pretty tricky conditions out there. What a lovely tack there by the Spaniards. Dufresne just sorting out her main sheet. And the 470, Rob, is it a, 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 where does it sit in the whole dinghy world? I think it's probably, you know, the principal two-person, male or female, uh, high-performance dinghy, really. Sailed internationally the world over with the main emphasis on uh, the Olympics every four years. Well, at the top mark, it's the Swedish boys, Molland and Anderson, with a tidy little lead. 
And they're chased by Philippe and Lebert from France, the local sailors with the Americans in third, and the Spanish girls, Via de Fresne and Azon in fourth. The Spaniards going for a quick hoist here. Good crew work? Yeah, great crew work. You see the helm pick up the spinnaker sheet. The crew's about to go out onto the trapeze. Lots of communication going on. It's great. Well, the Spanish team in fourth place here. Brits right on their tail. Natalia Fresne helming here. She was a gold medalist in the Europe class. Really talented sailor. Now in the 470 women's, as the Swedish boy, Mullen and Anderson, fly round, chased by the French. And the Spaniards in third, cracking sailing this from the Spanish girls. Yeah, the Spanish is forced out slightly by the Americans there. And uh, that might just give the opportunity. Yep, here they come, Rogers and Glanfield coming in just slightly on the inside. This could be telling by the bottom mark. Well, quite a handful. You can see the kites filling there of the Spanish boat. And the Swedes come round, the Swedish girls just overstretching it. Over they go. A little bit too much to handle there. Yeah, to be fair to the Swedish girls, the course they're sailing for this TV only event, they don't normally sail it. So uh, there's a few unexpected things out there on the race course today. Like this, an absolute dogfight at the front. The French boat flying along beside the Swedish boys. While the Swedish girls trying to ride their boat. Well, that's pretty much game over for, for them in this very short format racing, two laps. Yeah, any small mistakes on this format and you're out of the race and uh, you have to count every single race. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty hard thing to swallow. A ruthless format. Well, we like that. We like that as we watch the Spanish boat flying along. These girls are absolutely on fire. Look at that speed roll. Yeah, they're doing really well, but you can see Rogers and Glanfield just slightly to windward. It's all going to come down to the rounding at this bottom mark. Well, at that mark. Oh, the Swedish boys, Moland and Allison just pipping it in front of the French team of Philippe and Lebert. Well, that's incredibly close there. We're on for a real battle for first and second now. The Americans in third. A tidy little drop there from Forrester and Burnham. The Spanish team coming round in fourth. Oh, and they're dropping their kite. Oh, no, it's sinking and plunging. This is not looking very good for them, Rob. No, I'm afraid there's a bit of Spanish trawling going on here. The girls were under a lot of pressure by Rogers and Glanfield on the inside. And I think they just went for the kite halyard just that little bit too early and it just got away from them. And uh, unfortunately, as soon as it hit the water, it was just just slowed them totally down and stopped them dead in the water. Probably game over for them now. Well, it looks like you couldn't really wish for a better parachute anchor than that out the back. So the Spaniards just hauling their nets back in. Meanwhile, at the front, the Swedish boys against the French boys. The Swedes just looks like they've got the upper hand, but it's uh, neck and neck, I'd say. They'll just be looking for gusts on the water at this stage, any small shifts that might just give them an advantage. All they want really is one boat length advantage to just make sure they get around the top mark in front of the other boat. Spanish girls taking a breather. And at the top, it is the French team of Lebert and Philippe just round ahead of the Swedes, Moland and Anderson. So uh, an overtake there. That's quite impressive sailing by the Frenchmen. They do know the currents and tides here in Brest better than anyone. So a slight home advantage. And at these speeds, it'll also be down to trimming on the downwind leg. As we watch Moland and Anderson, some lovely surfing going on now, perfect conditions. You'll be able to see the crew moving the spinnaker pole and the spinnaker just pumping the boat. Moland looks to be calling for a protest with the uh, French there. I think the French jibed onto port. Moland still calling but no action from the jury. Well, he <laughs> doesn't look too chuffed with that, but it's not slowing him down anything. They're sailing beautifully well, these two. Yeah, it's all going to be about just coordinating the uh, pumping on the waves to go downwind here. Well, the Swedes around that bottom mark already. The French pair losing out by about 10 seconds, I'd say. 
How, how do you rate the uh, the Swedish boys, Rob? Well, we've had two test events at the Athens venue ready for the Olympics in 2004, and they've won them both. So uh, I think you'd rate them as, you know, probably uh, one of the lightly medalists. And Nick Rogers, he was second in one of those. And with Forrester just winning the uh, Europeans here, he's going to be in, in for a shout as well. So we have a top class fleet here for the 470 Sprint Cup. Moland and Anderson around the top. In first place, the French crew, they've actually um, gained a little bit there, so it is amazingly close with the Americans just behind in third. Yeah, and on this uh, no discard series, it's all going to be about just getting one extra place on some of these final uh, legs of the course. Well, yeah. we, we saw it, sorry, Rob, we saw the Americans absolutely fired up now, and it really looks like the Swedes and the French uh, have the bit between their teeth. The Brits steaming in there, yep. they're, they're racing the Americans for third and fourth, so battle for first. I think the Swedes have got it just ahead of the French pair. Great sailing by Mulland and Anderson. Yeah, great battle, the French and the Swedes, they just traded first place all the way around. Another battle here between the Brits and the Americans. Oh, look at the Brits pumping away just to take third place. How close was that? Pretty close, and that could be crucial. Well, the Americans keep the first overall after two races, just one point ahead of Philippe and Lebert, with Rogers and Glanfield also on six points, and Moland and Anderson just behind on seven. So it's all to play for, incredibly close. And look at these blasting images of 470s at full tilt. Beautiful images, Rob. Yeah, great sailing, and uh, it's just on the limit now. Some of the girls are just starting to go in. Well, class chairman, Darren Dunkley-Smith, who we uh, heard from earlier, wanted some sort of cut and thrust blasting action to show these uh, dinghies at their best, and I think he's really got what he wished for. Jan, yeah, a fantastic race. Well done. Talk us through it. Yeah, we had a really good start down to leeward. We catch uh, the wind first of all boats, and then we just went straight up to the top mark, and we were first there, and uh, yeah, it was good. How about the final leg? It was pretty close between you guys. Yeah, really, really close. That's that's how sailing should be. <laughs> and tell me, you're you're pumping the spinnaker. What are you doing? Now we're trying to catch the waves and uh, at the same time pump the spinnaker and the mainsail to surf. Yeah. Okay. So now tell us, uh, you got a, a sixth and a first. You're going to be in the middle somewhere. Game plan into the final yeah, race. Yeah, we, we need to be in the top. That that's the game plan. And conditions out here. Beautiful. A lot of wind, that's what we like. We're back with the third and final race of the 470 Spring Cup after the break. Don't go away. into the third and final race now of the 470 Sprint Cup here in Brittany, France. A little bit more blustery on the start line. Quite a bit more wind in this race and uh, again the split between port and starboard. Nick Rogers popping out on port but already the Swedes seem to have got a jump on him. Well we see the Brits, the Swedes, the French and the Americans, in fact all four of the, uh, the men's teams going out onto the right-hand side of the course. And the jury boat just flying up to the French team there, Philippe and Lebert. And uh, I think they told them to do a penalty turn, 360 degrees. Well, that's a, a bit of a disaster. We can't, uh, we don't know quite yet what's, what's happened. We do have a camera on board the French team. Let's go back to the beginning, the start of the race. Here we see Lebert and Philippe driving the Brits just behind them, Rob. Yep, this is pre-start. Both boats on stall, but it, it looks as though the French have tacked onto the port and then the, the Brits were forced out of the way. So I'd say the French were definitely in the wrong there. They gave the Brits nowhere to go and uh, the French tacked onto port just at the start. Well, you can see the Brits just having to uh, tack over and the French drifting behind the jury in the perfect position. From on board the French boat, the jury coming in here to tell them what they don't want to know. 
They're about to do their turns and with it their race is all over in this short format. No discards. These turns have been so costly for the French. Well, it's a pity for the new European champions. Slight infringement. Do you think uh, the Brits forced that on them? Well, I think that it was the uh, French just suddenly tacking that caused the Brits to tack away, to be honest. Fair enough. At the top mark, Moland and Anderson pulling out a respectable lead over the Brits. Rogers and Glanfield flying around that mark now. And the Americans, Forrester and Burnham chasing up in third. Every position is crucial here. The first three boats now all have the same points overall, so any mistake is going to cost people the chance of this regatta. Well, you couldn't get closer than that as the Slovenians and then the Spanish team. And I think the French just overtaking uh, the Swedish girls for sixth place. Well, conditions fantastic out here, Rob. Really beautiful, great finale to this, uh, this event. Yeah, the wind is really up now and it's, it's making this top reach a, a real decision maker. Do you put your spinnaker up or do you go without your spinnaker? Well, the Brits and the Americans deciding not to go with their kites at this stage. It's good to see the Slovenian girls and the Swedish girls with their kites, as are the French team, Lebert and Philippe. Yeah, I think the Americans might have a bigger problem there. They're slipping back through the placings. They are indeed. On here, the Brits. Oh, look, they're going for their kite hoist. They've changed their mind. Yeah, it's pretty hard work in these conditions. Good teamwork here. And then Joel just get out on the trapeze and then they'll suddenly take off down this reach. Well, well played the Brits. They decided that they didn't have the horse battle. Oh. oh, they're right on the edge now. Just losing their kite slightly. Just a rudder stall out there. They lost all steerage. And it looks like they're really struggling to make this mark now. Well, the French looking behind. Oh, they're gaining places there. Look, they've uh, climbed up to fourth position. Pretty good. As the Brits round in second place. And they're a good 15, 20 seconds behind the Swedes. All going terribly wide here. Yeah, they've got a bit on here. It looks as though they've called a late drop because they're not going to fly their spinnaker down the second reach. Real decision making. The Americans with the same issue. But it's going really wrong for the Americans. Oh, no, it's in the water again. Oh, the Americans doing their own bit of trawling. Well, there's really no recovery from that with any speed anyway oh look at that absolute breaks on as the French come into the mark now that's that's going to put the French up into third now and they're going to go for the drop as well yeah it's these little mistakes that are costing everybody at the moment the Swedes are sailing pretty uh, pretty much without a single mistake at the moment and it'll be interesting whether Roger's going to gain without his spinnaker down this second reach well done to the Frenchman there Swedes holding their kite all the way on that reach and now the upwind leg Sweden just covering the Brits beautifully yeah the Swedes have sailed the Brits out to the edge of the course here so no opportunities at all for the British and I think we'll see now everywhere that the British go the Swedes are going to cover them like that because all the Swedes need to do is just stay in front of the Brits for the rest of the race well Rob you know uh, Nick Rogers and Joe Glanfield uh, they're, they're quite a determined pair, wouldn't you say? Yeah, they, they, they were fourth in Sydney, and that must be the worst possible position to finish an Olympics in. And uh, their whole campaign is now focused on Athens, and wherever they go, they've been scrapping with these Swedes, and today's short course format is just another day of fighting with the Swedes. Fair enough. Oh, you can see Nick Rogers and Joe, they're giving it absolutely everything they can. I think we're going for a downwind finish on, uh, on this final race. Moland and Anderson, well, they've been superfluous, haven't they? Beautifully fluid together crew work. Yeah, one last jibe. You can see them helping each other out in the, uh, in the crew work here. Just a few little funny waves. The bow's going down, making it pretty tricky. Oh, we're approaching the finish line. A superb first place for the Swedes. Well, well done. Two wins from them. They were sixth after the first race, so they've pulled right from the back with the Brits in second. And that's how the overall standings finished up. Brits second and the French pulled up ahead of the Americans who had a problem in that final race. Well, super sailing there from this Swedish pair. 
Yeah, they sort of, they just looked so fluid in the boat. But uh, at the end of the day, they were equal points with the British pair. But those extra races, that was the key. They'd won more races with the, with the Brits, and so they took the regatta. Well, a weary fleet pulling their boats up. You couldn't really have wished for a better finale to the 470 Spring Cup, a explosive final race. Uh, we, we needed to be in top. We needed to win, to win this race. So um, we started, we uh, controlled the American guys and they, they had a bad start. Also, the French guys had a bad start and we just went away and we had a yeah, really good speed. We catch the wind shifts and it's really good. I'm not entirely sure of the points, but I think we're equal points, but because he won the race, he, he wins. But this format racing, did you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah. Really. Yeah, it's so great. A lot of tempo, tight racing, uh, everything. It's perfect. Well, the first race was okay because it was not so windy and then we could, we had a change against the boys, but then the wind increased. And then for the girls it was a little bit more difficult, but it was really fun. I think, I think what makes it difficult is that firstly the shifty conditions, but then also just the standard of the people you're racing against. Yeah, you make any small slip up and suddenly you had someone right on your tail again and pushing you hard, so uh, it, was, it was very difficult. Well, and a big cash prize, 3,000 euros going to Mulland and Anderson from Sweden. What? fantastic sailing we've seen out there and completely the opposite to what we've had during the European Championships. Going into the last uh, last heat this afternoon we had uh, two boats on six points and one on five so it was really close racing the whole time but really the Swedes are to be congratulated on fine sailing in fairly hairy conditions as it turned out to be. Do you want to do this again? Yeah, definitely. We'll definitely be uh, continuing with the format. We've got to play around to see if it's during the regatta or after the regatta, but we'll definitely be going on with the Sprint Cup. You'll see us back again. Well, we certainly hope so. Thank you, Darren Dunkley-Smith. A great idea for an event. We've enjoyed filming it. And thanks, Rob Andrews, for coming into the commentary box. Thank you to the French club and all the 470 sailors for a cracking Sprint Cup event. Bon année à tous de France. 1969, l'année de tous les désirs après la révolte.